Admiral, we have received a reply from the Obden leaders. They agree to our terms of surrender. Their remaining ships are withdrawing. Wakar let out the Arctaw equivalent of a sigh. He was both relieved at the end of one problem, and dreading the next task to come. Decades of fighting, finally at an end. His actions the deciding factor. His name soon to be held up as the greatest hero of his people, his fleet the only one remaining of his peoples. Yes, things had turned out even better than could have hoped for. Have the fork and Rall remain here to enforce the surrender. Have all other ships fall alongside our cruiser to join our warp sphere. Alert engineering that we will need a fleet-sized warp sphere ready to engage by the time the fleet is in position. Around him the crew sprang to action. Obedient to a fault, this crew would have followed his orders if he told them to step out of the airlock without a vac suit. His navigator stood ready for orders, but waited for Wakar to give them. Navigation, set a course for Seoul. When we've entered the system, prepare a second jump to Earth orbit. Orbital parameters, sir. Optimal bombardment height. Michael Denson's face and upper body occupied the communication screen in front of Wukar in his personal command room. Wukar. It's been so long since we spoke in real time. And I see you've brought along most of the ships my company has built for you. Is there a problem? After 19 years of interacting with humans, and this human in particular, Wukar had become quite astute at reading the body language of the species. Michael Denson's body language was tense, stressed, and though he showed his teeth in a friendly smile, it was clear to Wukar that he was not happy. There is no problem, Michael Denson. Then, can I ask why you've brought almost your entire war fleet inside of the orbit of Saturn, as explicitly forbidden in our contract and treaty? Do your ships need repairs? Upgrades? Perhaps you'd like to apply Section 3 terms and share some new technology in exchange for more ships? Our ships are optimal, Michael. A fortunate trait of humans was that despite their overly complex names, they allow for dropping of at least half of it in most situations. We've come to end our contract. End the contract. Wukar, our contract is more than a simple agreement. It's a treaty. It sets the rules of conduct between our two peoples, as well as the terms of our trade. You can't simply end it. What's this all about? I'm sorry Michael. The war with the Obden is won now. We have no more use for your warships. Michael smiled enthusiastically. That's fantastic news, Wukar. An end to all that needless death. You and I will have to come up with a whole new set of trade deals if you no longer need warships. Wukar knew that Michael was even better at reading Arctaw facial expressions and body language than he was at reading humans. He gave his equivalent of a sad smile. No, Michael, I'm afraid it's not so simple. My government on Ark decided not so long ago that once the Obden were defeated, there would still remain a threat to the Arctaw dominance. As their hand, I carry out their will to end that threat. Wukar and Michael stared at each other. More was said in expressions than could ever be said in words. Translation software would never have kept up with the vast experience the two beings had in understanding each other. After a moment, that seemed like ages, Michael asked, so just how far do the Arctaw people plan to go to end that threat? Wukar pushed a text document across the communications channel. Your largest 729 cities will be annihilated immediately via bombardment, along with all infrastructure and manufacturing related to space and satellites. The air will be kept as clean as possible to prevent ecological disaster, of course. Your population will be reduced to a more sustainable level, and will serve the Arcto Empire. Annihilation and slavery. That's the key points I'm hearing here. Michael's eyes grew intense. 
No, not slavery. Your species will be free to do as they like, provided they stay on Earth. Your governments will be held accountable to provide certain resources on a regular basis to the Arcto Empire. I see. We'll have to enslave ourselves to meet your demands, but the Arcto certainly aren't slavers. Michael paused and looked directly at the screen. Wukar, you don't have to do this. You have a choice here. Yours is the most powerful fleet in the entire region. You're being ordered to commit genocide. Disobey that order. They can't stop you. It was my idea, Michael. Michael's face showed no shock to this revelation. I know better than any of the rest of my people how dangerous your kind is. You are disobedient, rebellious, tricksters, thieves. In every language of your people, you have more words for deception than we could even imagine. If we were to let you escape your solar system, you would eventually betray us. It can't be allowed. Again, Michael showed no surprise. We built you your fleet, won you your war. This is how you thank us. Who is the betrayer now? He wasn't wrong, the human-built ships were incredible feats of engineering. Durable isn't a strong enough word. You could vaporize half the ship, and the other half would continue to fight. And despite the functional prowess, the design carried qualities that both species found beautiful to behold. The only reason the Obden had lost the war was that while they could make short work of Arctos ships, the human ships easily survived every encounter. They were all that was left of the Arctos fleet. I'm sorry, Michael. My sensors tell me you are currently at your headquarters in the outer regions of the city of Chicago. That city is on our list. I know you won't see us as friends after this, but for the sake of the many years we've worked together, I tell you now, flee that city as fast as you can. We'll destroy it last. With that, he ended the communication channel. Wakar stood from his chair and stared at the view screen before him for a moment, admiring the earth. 71% water covered, 7 major continents, an incredible range of climates, and a long list of dangerous life forms. No wonders humans had evolved such guile, you'd need it to survive here. He exited his command room to the bridge of the ship. Open channel to all ships, begin bombardment protocol. One variation from initial plan, save Chicago until the final orbit. He paused, then finally added go, springing the crew into action. The first bombardment lasers hit their targets 20 seconds later. Sir, we have completed the ninth search orbit. All 729 cities are completely destroyed. Air quality is within expected bounds given the situation. Communications and space infrastructure is destroyed. There is nothing left in orbit but our fleet. Good. Wakar let himself relax. His greatest fear in all of this had been that he had missed a final trick of the humans. After all these years working so closely with them, he had expected more. Over time and with re-education, these people would learn their place in the galaxy. With their food production and mining, the Arctaw would be able to build countless new colonies and expand their reach considerably. As one chapter ends, a greater one begins. Sir, we're receiving an incoming communication. Wukar looked surprised at his communications officer. From who? And from where? All their communications infrastructure is gone, you just assured me of that. My console isn't telling me a location. I'm trying to understand the problem, but it's giving me no coordinates of the source. Wukar again let out his species a sigh. Accept the channel, let's see what this is. Michael Denson's face and upper body occupied the view screen. He sat in the same room as before, as if he hadn't even gotten out of his chair since their last conversation. Wukar. I was hoping we could speak again, perhaps in private. The crew all looked to their leader. Wukar held his face as stone, hiding his surprise and worry. 
Michael. I'm glad to see you have survived the ordeal of your species. We can talk openly here. First, where are you? We cannot seem to isolate the source of your communication signal. Michael laughed. Yeah, you won't. The last thing I need is bombardment lasers firing at me. I wanted to ask you. Wakar interrupted. How? How are you hiding your location? Michael laughed again. Wakar, who do you think built your communication systems? You can diagnose the communications console all you want, you'll never find the source of this signal. Wakar again held his expression, hiding a growing fear. Sensors, begin scanning every frequency of every known communication spectrum. Find the source. On the screen in front of him, Michael shook his head. I'm really sorry to tell you this Wakar, but you have the same problem again. Who built your sensors? I mean, yes, ostensibly the technology is one you provided, but the system's integration with the rest of the ship, that was all under my control. You won't find me. Don't even try. Under enough heat, even stones will melt, Wakar's face began to transfer communications to my command room, he yelled as he stormed out of the bridge. Michael's face was waiting for him on the screen when he arrived, smiling politely. Wakar glared at him. You were never in Chicago. Where are you then? A bunker. Were you prepared for this eventuality? Well prepared I'm afraid. I'm currently on a ship actually. Wouldn't want to be on the ground of a planet when it gets bombarded. Could get dangerous. Wakar opened a comm to the bridge alert all ships to begin scanning for a nearby ship, and run diagnostics on all sensor systems, find how he is evading us. Michael's smiling face remained. It'll do you no good. Who built you those diagnostic tools? Wakar dropped all attempts at maintaining his composure. No, the Europa shipyards may be operated by humans, but we have stationed hundreds of overseers, inspectors, specialists people there to prevent this exact situation. We control our ships, you simply build them. Overseers, inspectors, specialists, all relatives of powerful people. They were chosen less for their abilities than for their family's desire to see them have an important job. Your nepotism put your most useless people in a place where they were bored and easily manipulated. Wakar's rage grew. My own daughter was such an overseer. She would not betray her people. And she didn't. But she did spend three years not noticing the many, many back doors the humans she was overseeing added to the software. Wakar jammed his hand against the end communications button. Michael's smiling face disappeared from the screen. He opened another channel to the bridge. Dispatch the rod and the Oroko to take the Europa station by force. Have them arrest everyone on board, humans and Arctaw. He closed the channel before any reply could be made. He walked to the far end of his room and took a long drink of warm water from his fountain. Behind him, Michael's face returned to the communication screen. That's a good idea actually. Hydration is so important to both our races. Michael picked up a glass of water himself and took a sip. Get off my communication screen, Michael. Get out of my ship systems. Wakar turned around and glared at the screen. You should be tending to your people, your world. It took many years for Wakar to be able to discern the human expression of surprised, from the sarcastic faint surprised. Michael's face showed the latter. Why? What's wrong with my people and world? Every item on board the ship was designed expecting immense force and impacts to it, due to the nature of a warship. This was for the best, as Wakar slammed his hand into the console in front of him, opening a view screen of the burning planet below. Am I to believe that you've tricked my sensors then? That I haven't just turned 729 cities to burning dust? Do you control my weapons too? Michael calmly replied. No, you have definitely burned many cities today. Billions lie dead at your hands. 
as monstrous a thing as I can even imagine. His smile became sad. You just haven't killed any humans today. Bukhar stared at his console, at the image of the planet burning below him. He couldn't trust it anymore, couldn't trust anything on board this ship. With a scream bellowing from his mouth, he ran from the room, terrifying the bridge crew. He ran past them, down the hallway to the nearest airlock. He slammed the airlock operator out of the way, grabbing a vac suit as he stepped into the airlock. As the airlock removed all atmosphere, the world around him became quiet, but for his rapid shallow breaths. Michael's voice came from behind him, from the internal vac suit sound system. You won't like what's out there, Wukar. The airlock's light turned green, and Wukar hurriedly pushed out the door. He tied a rope onto the safety latch and floated out, staring down at the burning world below him. The oceans had all moved, the continents rearranged. It took a moment for the pattern to make sense to him. He was 90 degrees off from the usual way he saw this globe. Yet there, below him, was arced. 729 fires burned across his homeworld. How, he asked to the void. Michael's voice replied. We built your navigation systems. We built your targeting systems. We built your view screens. We built the communication systems you used to confirm your orders to destroy us. He floated in silence, watching the world below him. You were always planning this then. I suppose that makes me right. You could never be trusted. Michael's voice became very serious. We would never harm a friend. We would have built you as big an armada as you ever needed, helped you fight your enemies. Every threat out there in the universe that you defeated would mean a safer galaxy for my people. We could have been partners for an eternity. He paused. Wakar watched the city he was born in pass by below, the orange glow standing out from the night side of the planet. In the corners of his vision, movement. Lifeboats, moving away from his fleet of ships. He pressed his wrist calm. Calmly he asked, Bridge, Wakar here, why do I see lifeboats leaving the fleet? In the background, an alarm blared loudly. The first officer replied between breaths, Sir, all ships have entered self-destruct mode. We can't stop it, we don't know what triggered it. Forgive me sir, but in your absence I gave an abandoned ship order. Wakar disabled his wrist calm and quietly watched the many lifeboats peel away from the ship. They aren't going to self-destruct though, are they? Michael's voice was calm as he replied. No, no, that would be quite a waste, wouldn't it? No, these ships are going to wait for all crew to disembark, then enter a warp bubble back to Europa shipyards to undergo further upgrades. Michael said just one more thing to Wakar. After he did, Wakar took a deep breath, then overrode the vac suit safeties and vented his air into the void. These upgrades will make the ship so much better. You wouldn't believe the technology the Obden traded to us for ending your war. Author's name and link to original text is in the description.